Hello again, this is Jerry with Killer Clowns FPV. Today we're taking a look at the True Vision software from Furious FPV. Um, this is essentially um, a configurator for the Piggy OSD, the M Nova, the N Nova V4. Um, for the setup, uh, just to, to test and show you guys the capabilities of this and the setup, how easy it is to use, um, I have a Pico F4 wired directly to the Innova V4. Um, I'm using a Foxier Aero uh, V3 camera. I'm not going to be displaying video. This is more of a software-wise, but I will have another video that shows um, the features in depth. Um, this is just a quick little look. Um, and then I have a uh, SPD-15 receiver also from Furious FPV wired up um, with uh, S-Port uh, telemetry. So um, let's go ahead and get going. Uh, for settings, as I said, um, all you really need to do is have the Pico powered. Um, if you don't use that. I believe you can wire it uh, from uh, FTDI uh, directly on the Innova V4. So you don't need to have the uh, Pico power to configure it. But I mean, obviously, if you're going to have a setup um, that has both of them and then whatever receiver, whatever you're using, uh, you're not going to have to be popping them out since it does do a serial pass through uh, via the UART1 port. Um, so let's go ahead and get, it, uh, get onto it on connection. So as far as connection, um, it is on COM9, as I said, it, it's just USB straight to the PC um, from the Pico, and the Pico is wired uh, with the Nova V4. Um, and then you would choose which uh, UART the um, MSP setup on the uh, Nova V4. In my case, it's on UART1. Um, so you go ahead and hit connect. It should auto detect the board, as you can see, it says virtual COM port, and it did show up in Nova V4. Um, on the MWOSD uh, firmware, it kind of annoys me. Actually, it, it annoys me big time. I, I don't I don't like it. Um, where it's giving me a lot of issues with um, firmware issues, like little glitches and stuff, where um, either the uh, milliamp ratings were off, the voltage rating was off, or a b bunch of other things. It was just kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. This thing is ridiculously easy. So, as I said, everything's powered up right now. Uh, when you do hit connect, you hit, you get everything. You get this, this nice little layout right here. Um, so on the left-hand side, you'll see you have your uh, the display, which is your little uh, virtual screen. It'll show you what data you're actually going to be seeing. Um, by default, uh, you only have the time on, the um, channel, and the battery voltage. Um, as far as fonts goes, you do have either bold, large, or default I prefer the large it's a lot easier to read um, then right here it says OSD icons you do have it tells you timer RSSI voltage amps milliamp horizon bar VTX flight mode and call sign um, this is really neat because on, on the other one you on the uh, MWOSD to config anything you had to um, find the the value in the software first and then enable it and then move it around the screen it, it takes a lot longer the way that they did this one so um, as you can see the, the ones that are gray are ones are actually that are grayed out that you can't see are ones that are already enabled the ones that are bright are ones that have not been enabled that are able to be drug onto the screen and the way you do that is say if you wanted amps you literally just grab that and you can drag it over the screen and drop it wherever you like and it's that easy. You don't have to go like messing with stuff, trying to find things. Same thing with the horizon bar. Say you wanted to set it there. Um, I never use it. I don't know. It, it kind of annoys me. Um, if you want to take whatever value off, you can drag it back to this little section over here. Um, and as I said, this right here, this is the uh, band and channel. Um, then down here, you have your voltage, uh, milliamp consumed, and then you're on uh, flight time. Um, this is the configuration for the OSD. This thing is, it, it just makes everything so easy. So you have your uh, video signal, which you can choose between PAL and NTSC. A uh, voltage alarm, it's said to, it doesn't have point, but that would be 13.8 volts. For a 4S, you can do 3.4 volts and multiply by 4, whatever your cell count rating is. Um, and then you can set an alarm for the milliamp. So if you have a 1550 milliamp pack, I usually set mine around maybe 1300. Um, and then down below you have your VTX setting. So it's literally as easy as whatever band you want to choose. You have your A to H bands. Um, most people use A uh, are the, the first four. Um, so I always fly on F1. So you would literally just click F channel, whatever you want one and then VTX power. So you can switch it between 25 or 200, um, whatever you prefer. I have it at 25 just cause I'm operating indoors. I don't want it to, uh, overheat. 
Um, and then another feature that this does have that it's pretty damn nice not having to uh, click buttons on the video transmitter to turn it on. You can set it up for um, VTX a shutdown via your the Tyrannus or whatever radio it is you have. Um, so you'd have auxiliary one, two, three, or four. I have it set on auxiliary one. So when I arm it, uh, video comes on, I disarm, video comes off. Um, and then you have pit mode as well. So pit mode um, is, it cuts power to 0.1 milliwatt. Um, that way you still get video, you can still make adjustments to your OSD and whatever. Um, but it's not going to smoke your video transmitter. So it's still on, you still have power, but it's very, very low. So even if you didn't have the antenna on or whatever it is, or maybe there's other uh, people trying to get set up around you, you don't interfere with their setup. Um, and you can easily turn that or, or turn it on or turn it off. Um, and then right here you have your call sign. So whatever it is, mine obviously KKFPV. Um, and then when you do enable it, mine's not uh, enabled yet. You can see it here, but say if I wanted my call sign up here, I could go ahead and drop it. And it's literally a matter of hitting right. And then you see the progress bar up here and then you get right done. And it'll let you know the little notifications are over. So you'll see that it is now updated with the new information. Um, and if you do want to relocate anything, as I said, you can just drag it and drop it higher. Um, and then again, you can hit right. So any, any little thing you want to change, it's very easy to change and it updates, I mean, right away. So you're not, you don't have issues with uh, like FTDI. And as I said, you can go that route, but it's a lot easier than uh, MWOSD. And then especially with the Pico before, this thing makes it ridiculously easy. Um, and then you combine it with the SPD-15 and with that smart port, you can adjust PIDs via your Tyrannus. So you don't even have to use a PC anymore. Um, you can do channel change, frequency change, pretty much anything. Um, so this thing is, I mean, it it comes in handy big time uh, for setup and everything. It just simplifies everything. Um, I've been messing with this for a couple hours. Uh, so far, I love uh, how it works. I am I have a build that's almost done, so I'm going to be using this on it as well um, on a 130 build. Um, but I'll make another video showing you guys um, actual VTX shutdown, um, how it works. Very simple. It's literally just, like I said, choosing your auxiliary channel. Um, matching that up to whatever uh, whatever it is on your radio on Betaflight or uh, the flight controller you're using just to make sure it matches. And you can power it on and power it off um, via that. So yeah, that's the first look at the True Vision uh, 1.0 by Furious FPV. And this is a Chrome add-on. So when you download it, you literally go into uh, your extensions, uh, enable developer mode, um, drag and drop it, and it'll say if you want to install, you hit yes, and that's it. Um, takes 30 40 seconds but uh this is what you get very nice little gui um hopefully you guys like it uh and as soon as it is up whoever does have a chance go ahead and get it if you have uh, the nova v4 or as i said uh the piggy osd the m nova you're going to be able to update your firmware with the fddi and then after it's updated you can use this whole thing to manage it thanks for watching see you guys next time <laughs>